Hello, how are you? My name is Cheryl Lewin and welcome to our Facebook Live. Um, we just periodically do these to answer common questions that patients ask us. So very casual, just gonna go through some of the questions that were submitted. First question is, do you start surgery at age three or four? Why do some doctors say that it cannot be done until age 10? So historically, when you do the porous implant method, either MedPore or Supor, we offer that to start as early as age three. I will say that I've had a slight change in my practice this year because earlier in the year, there was recommendations from um, studies that have been done on general anesthesia in young children. And the recommendation from the pediatric anesthesiologists is it may be better to postpone elective surgeries longer than three hours till age four. So we are preferentially um, just trying to be on the safe side for our little kids and do surgery uh, at four. I don't see any big difference at all between three and four years of age. So that's that. It's nice, it, you know, my belief is nice to get it done before you go to kindergarten, which is usually five or six. Um, why does doctors say it can't be done till 10? A lot of patients are told that and that's typically the age that most people around the world do the rib cartilage method for ear reconstruction. The reason they wait till age 10 is because the ribs need to grow large enough to create an adult sized ear. And many people around the world believe that takes at least till 10 years of age. Um, in bigger kids, you could do it earlier potentially, but that doesn't apply to um, MedPore or Supor surgery. Those kids can have it any age, um, to be honest, but I'd say it's nice to do it a little younger. Our next question, oh, <laughs> rumor has it you are using a new and improved implant. Can you tell us about it? So I'd say about two and a half years ago, I started using Supor instead of MedPor for most of my ear reconstructions. And I really like the material a lot. They're identical, they're both porous polyethylene. So the material itself is identical, the manufacturing process and kind of the feel of the material is a little different. Um, what this question I believe refers to, however, is uh, about four or five months ago, we did our first Lewin ear implant. Um, that's an implant that I designed and the Supor company manufactures for me. And it's a one piece design, but customizable. So very different than all the other sort of implants out there that I'm aware of. Um, the biggest advantage to me is twofold. I can create a much more natural, realistic looking ear that is much more similar to the other side because of the hand carving aspect of it. And the second is that since it's one piece, you can think of it as sculpting from a single block or a single unit. So you're taking away to create the shape as opposed to adding in with the current, you know, implant that I've been using for the past decade. And because of that, my belief is it basically could not fracture. So eliminating a risk such as fracture, which although it's very rare, if it does occur, it requires a surgery to replace the implant. So to me, that's a very big advantage. So hopefully um, we're doing mostly lunars now. And so you'll start seeing the results on our before and after pictures. Question three, which Baja does Dr. Lewin recommend? So whenever I get questioned about Bajas, I'm like the very first person to say, plastic surgeon, not an ENT, not a hearing specialist at all. So I defer to families to talk to both their ENT and their audiologists who are both specially trained for hearing. And, you know, I encourage everybody to try all options. There's multiple out there and um, we have, almost always have, um, certainly Otacon and Cochlear come to our conferences and sometimes other um, Baja companies as well. So please go to your audiologist and have them help you with that decision. The one thing we say is if you're gonna have the Baja or Ponto implanted at the same time as the ear is made, we just require that you trial it on a soft band first. So we know you're gonna be happy with the processor that you choose. Question four, where will the next Iracles conference be? So um, we are having what we call a mini Mac, which is um, sort of a smaller version of our Iracles conference in that 
I'm the only surgeon talking, but it's sort of a different focus, I guess, and it is going to be, oh my goodness, it's going to be December 9th in New York City. We're coming back to New York for our East Coast families, make it a little easier on them, and we have a big patient panel. We have a lot of different talks, very family focused and talk about insurance, tips and tricks, bullying, you know, some other things that we don't cover as much on our big conferences. We do have a date for next year's big conference where myself, Dr. Bonilla, and Dr. Kesser will all be speaking as per our usual big conference, and that is August 3rd and 4th next year. Location to be announced soon-ish, um, certainly before the end of the year. We're working on that. Um, oh, we got us so excited for New York Max, you oh, then. Good, good. We're happy. Oh, I was supposed to say um, we only have eight spots left in New York. So if you're interested in New York, sign up uh, so we can um, make sure you get a spot. Okay, question five. How far out do you book surgery and when is the best time of the year to book surgery? Um, how far out we, we've sort of changed our policy in the last year or so. Instead of booking, some people know they want surgery in 2020 and it gets very hard to handle if you're booking out really far ahead. So we sort of made a rule now, you can't book out more than one year. So if you know you want surgery when your child turns four, you know, call us when they turn three and that's perfect timing, lets us help you get the insurance all squared away, gives us plenty of time, we usually have a Skype consultation at that time and we go over you know, early questions and then we talk again when it gets closer. So um, that's kind of the best time for that. And then time of the year, um, well, I suppose I'd say my East Coast families and Canadian patients would say you should book surgery in December because it is gorgeous in Southern California and not in a little chilly back home. But, um, and then a lot of people of course prefer summer. The only thing about summer is if you have a kid that loves to swim and that's when they get their chance, the six week post-op time period where you can't swim is a little rough. So you could do right before summer, May, spring break-ish, um, something in the spring or you know, really any time of the year works for us. So we work with, with what you want. There's no best time per se. All right, we have a question from Maria. Do you only reconstruct the ear or do you open the ear canal? Excellent question. So I, I only reconstruct the outer ear. And so being a plastic surgeon, I focus more on that por portion. If you um, do want to get what's called an atresia repair or canal reconstruction, I work with a lot of doctors that do that surgery and we typically ask that they do their atresia repair first. The one thing I will say that I'm particularly um, pleased with of, of this newer implant and kind of the, the changes I've been making in the last year is that now I create what I call like a pseudo canal. So even though it's not a real canal for hearing, if you're not a candidate for a treasure repair, we create the appearance of a canal with a shadow and uh, sort of the impression that it goes deep, even though of course it's, it's a false canal. We have many greetings from Ecuador. That's so fun. Oh, There's so many people chiming hello, in. Hello, Ecuador. <laughs> we have a question from Rob. He has some specific uh, questions regarding insurance coverage. Do you want to direct um, oh, some, someone yes. like Rob who has some insurance questions? Actually, we have some really exciting news on insurance for those patients that are from the United States. Um, they're best addressed by our patient care coordinator, Larissa. Her email is PCC, for patient care coordinator, at lewinmd.com, or you can call the office and talk to her. But um, we have been able to make great strides with the help of um, a lot of research we've been doing and a patient advocate that helps us get insurance to cover surgery. So it's been really exciting the last year. Um, we've really made some headway in getting my crochet covered. Uh, Gabby in Ecuador says hello. Gabby, <laughs> how are you? Um, <laughs> That's so 
Perla asked the question, how much does sur surgery cost? Do you um, maybe want to specify the contact us to get more information? Oh, yeah. We, we ask that you um, fill out the form on the website. It's just a little button, contact us, and then we send you an extremely detailed everything you could ever want to know about how to get surgery, uh, including fees and timing and um, all of that information. So if you fill out that contact us, we'll be happy to send all that information to you. And we got Shannon and Davin. Uh, oh, hi Sarah. Shannon, hi Davin. And Angela Sabo. Angela, Sarah. Uh, can you repeat the patient care coordinator email address, please? Sure, I'm sorry, it's pcc at lewinmd.com. And I can give out our office phone number because that also works. So it's area code 310-828-1414. Um, and regarding Perla's question, if you did um, submit a inquiry to the contact us and haven't received a response, once in a great while we do have issues with Hotmail email addresses we that have, you can call. We, we have had some email issues in the last two weeks, I will tell you. We are working hard to try to correct those, but there have been many emails that I think have not been connecting, so we greatly apologize for that. But please call our office if we haven't gotten back to you, and that's almost certainly what's happened. We're normally super, super prompt, so please, um, we've noticed, noticed in the last two weeks, patient haven't been getting some of our emails, inconsistent. So call us if you, if you can. Um, Summer and Hayden say hello from oh, Alabama. Oh, hello, guys. Oh my gosh. Send me pictures I haven't seen. He must oh. be huge now. <laughs> and, and Charlie and Michelle are saying, Larissa's amazing in her job. See you all soon. Oh, that's, cute. that's awesome. Um, somebody had a question. Do you do the Baja um, implantation during surgery? Yes, we do. Um, I do both uh, cochlear Baja, the, what's called the Connect, which is the abutment, or the Attract which is the magnet. If they're done the same time as the ear is made, there's no scars. And then I also do the Ponto um, Oticon's product, which is an abutment, also no scars. So um, there, that, that is an advantage uh, to getting it done all at once. However, I will say thickness of skull is an issue. So we typically, like five and six year olds, even though we can do it that early, if you're on the littler side, you may not have thick enough skull bone. We can still try, but um, six, seven year olds, good. We got a hay from Allie Mills in North Carolina. Oh my goodness, wow, she was so little last time I saw her. Very cute. Awesome. Um, more greetings from Ecuador. Wow, that's so awesome. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Um, somebody had a question regarding a treasure repair and your opinion on it, and perhaps you can talk about how to set up a consultation yeah, for more in-depth conversations. That's, a, um, that's a, a long conversation because it's a lot has to do with your individual child, their anatomy, whole bunch of factors related to that. So I do um, am happy to discuss that. We honestly, we will talk to any patient anytime, no charge. It's a you know Skype consultation. We give you 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever you need to go over specific questions because, you know, as, as you may know, most of our patients are not from a local area and it's a big, huge decision. And our mantra is everybody just needs to get their information. So we're very happy to talk to any patients on a phone or Skype consultation. And we'll take one more question from Maria. Do you prefer rib cartilage or med pour? Well, I'm a super biased surgeon. Um, I did learn both techniques. Um, the last time I did a rib was in 2010, and I basically made um, a, a decision that I feel like in my own hands, the results are always better with MedPore or SuPore, the porous implant method. So it's my preference for, for a whole variety of reasons, not the least of which I think they look much more realistic and natural. Great, and um, just to wrap up, we have um, Helena saying they're excited that Haley's coming out to get their Lewin ear. Michael oh. Grasshands <laughs> just joined. A little oh. bit late there, bud. Oh, <laughs> 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 Go Badgers. Um, anyways. <laughs> Do 
sniffing oh, okay. getting her coming. All right, all right. Um, we just want to, we can wrap it up. And yeah, I just want to thank all of you guys. I know it's rough timing, um, sometimes hopping on this, but we really love interacting live with everybody. Thank you to so many of my patients that piped in to give us a hello and we love you guys. Thank you. We'll see you next time.